We only see the very tip of the top of the iceberg when we are looking at pictures. When you're scrolling through somebody's feed, you are only seeing the very best of the very best of that person's work because, hey, we don't usually want to show people all the stuff that went wrong. We want our, we want our followers, we want people to think, wow, they're amazing. Look at all these incredible pictures. That's an ego-driven thing, but it isn't reality. The reality is you do not get to see how many times a photographer revisited the same location. You do not get to see how many images were taken in order to capture that breathless one. And because we are so bombarded online, it is very easy to think that we really don't have what it takes in order to capture the sort of images that we want to capture. Now, this just past Saturday, the 16th of September, I ran my Cameras Don't Take Pictures seminar and photo walk in London. And it's a question which came up a lot throughout the seminar, as well as on the photo walk. So I thought it would be a good idea just to show you the 10 chosen images I have taken away from a six hour photo walk and then go through all the other shots. Now we're not gonna go through them one at a time, that will take forever, but we are gonna have a look and I can show you which ones I chose, maybe talk you through why, show you things that didn't work, okay? But before we dive in and have a look at those, please <clears throat> take a moment to hit the like button. And also I'm gonna be asking you to make a few comments as we move forward. Now, all of these images you're looking at right this second on my screensaver, these are the tip of the top of various different icebergs. They are not just walking around going, click, amazing image, click, amazing image, click, amazing image. So let's dive on in. First of all, let's take a look at my chosen images from that photo walk. Now I am, a bit of a street guy, I love documentary photography, so most of it is what we've got here. And I also had a predominant, if you like, leaning towards shooting in black and white. I love black and white. Now, of course, <laughs> the camera shoots in color, and also these were shot as JPEGs simply because I had the camera on the wrong setting, so the amount of post-production I could do was very, very limited, apart from really messing around with contrast a little bit and changing them to black and white. Let's have a look through them first. I really enjoyed this picture. He was kind of a street performer on the banks of the Thames, and he was getting people out of the audience to come and you know do stuff with juggling balls and other things that he was doing. Now, I really like this image because it's kind of bizarre. It's like, who's this guy leaning backwards? You know, who's putting this ball on his head? The only thing for me is it doesn't say so much about the place, where are we? So I shot another version of it, which has also made it into my final selection. And that's this one. Same thing, just move quickly around to the side. But now we're telling a little bit more of a story. We're saying a little bit more about what was going on. Where are we? That's St. Paul's Cathedral in the background. Boom, we immediately know we're in London. We've got a bit of an audience all gathered around watching. Boom, we know it's a street performer. Pop a comment down below. Tell me, which is your preferred option? This one with the city in the background or the first one, which just concentrates on the boy and the guy. I like both, that's why both are in my final selection of 10. We were down here on the Millennium Bridge and it was a very, very busy day. There were so many people around and yeah, some of the guys who are on the photo walk, if you're watching this video, maybe it was you. <clears throat> you're saying, it's so busy, there's so many people. How are we gonna get a good shot? Well, my response would be, include the people, bring them into it because it's a busy day. Document that busy day. So this is one of my complete favorites. I just love these two and just got in close, started shooting them. How do we go about it? Well, you know, they obviously noticed I was doing it. They were okay, but don't be afraid to interact. Talk to people. I just said, hey guys, you look amazing. And oh, you got an Australian accent. Where are you from? Oh, you're a crazy Australian, are you? Right, brilliant, blah, blah, blah. And then we just got chatting. I gave them my card, said, by all means, get in touch. But also they just sort of carried on after the ice was broken. You never know what people are gonna say. You don't know what their reaction is gonna be. 
but don't be afraid of that. How can you be afraid of the unknown? Because we don't know what that is yet. This also made it into my list. This is uh, Bob. He was on the workshop. He's one of the photographers. We were actually discussing um, feeling uncomfortable about pointing a camera at a stranger. And I was just showing him, look, if you put on a wide angle lens and sort of shoot over there, it looks like you're not even photographing them, but he was the subject of the picture. Looking at it here on screen, I thought, I really like it. And you can see in the background there, some of the guys who were on the photo walk. This lady, this artist, was was painting the view of, I think that's Vauxhall Bridge on the River Thames. Um, now, of course, it's really easy to take a shot of her from in front or the side or whatever. But that's kind of ordinary. If you want people to look at your pictures and, and you know, pay attention a bit, you need to do something slightly different. You may be able to see behind her here, there is a wall. So I just kind of very carefully hopped up onto the wall behind her because then I could look down at what she was doing. We don't need the location in the photograph because the location is in her painting. Now, as luck would have it, she had ear pods in, she was listening to music and she really didn't notice that I was there. Now, before doing it, the camera's pre-focused. Set up the focal distance. Focus on something that's going to be the same distance away. Get the exposure ready. Don't jump up there and start fiddling around because you're going to spoil the moment. It was literally up over the top. Click, click, click. Took a couple of frames. You're going to see them in a minute. This one I thought was not going to be a keeper because what I'd seen was the guy with the selfie stick holding it up and the happy family all posing for a selfie. And I thought that'd make a great shot. Rushed over there. I was too late. I missed the selfie moment. And I grabbed this one. But when I came back here and looked at them bigger and put it into black and white, I suddenly decided I loved it because of this girl in the middle. Look at her expression looking at me, the lady behind her who's laughing. Look at the guy holding the camera here. Look at his expression of delight and excitement looking into the pushchair. There is something a little bit magical about it, but I didn't notice it at the time. The classic street photographer's friend, isn't it? Light coming in under a bridge somewhere and then sandwiching people in there. I didn't do a great job of this, to be honest, but I still like it. I should have let them get a little bit further out of the frame over here. So we'd have more shadow, more light on the whole of the front of their bodies, not just on their legs. Nonetheless, it's still in my 10 because I like it. Talk more about it when we go inside. I love these three women who are walking up the street with such power. They were obviously you know, buzzing with energy and it was leaking out into the ether around us. Once again, camera ready, focus somewhere, get everything set up so that you know what's going to go on. And then I just shouted down the street out and goes, hey ladies, you look fabulous to provoke a reaction because that's what I wanted, a reaction, not just a picture. I wanted them to interact with me. And this is what we got. There are other shots. We'll have a quick look in a minute. But I really, really love this one. I just think they are so, so much. Look, they're even all in step. There's so much energy coming from these ladies. Instagrammers and influencers, I've never seen so many, but I kind of like these two who'd obviously, you know, they're all dressed up for the occasion. They're out, they're spending so much effort posting, posing, taking pictures to put onto their Instagrams and things. Now, I don't know who they are. They might be super famous. They might be actresses. I don't know. But it just seems to me the world is now so concerned with getting the picture for Instagram or wherever it may be that they miss the whole point of being there. They're looking at it through the lens or through the back of the, the phone instead of actually standing there for a moment and just thinking about, where am I? What's going on here? Who built this? But I did like the picture. Bunch of kids, dance troupe, using their ingenuity. They were a couple of flights up on the outside of a build, outside of an office building with reflective windows. And they were practicing their routine in the windows, saving money on renting a dance studio. And I just loved it. I took a few pictures there. We didn't stay there too long, but I thought it was a great shot. So those are my chosen images from the Cameras Don't Take Pictures photo walk on Saturday afternoon. There's not a lot of 
not a lot, is there? Now, if we go and have a quick look at that folder, here we go, look, 202 frames. That's what I shot. I haven't been beating them off. I shot 202 frames. Now, cameras don't take pictures is about getting people into the right frame of mind, the right psychology, because you have to be. Cameras don't take pictures. You take pictures. And if your brain's in the wrong place, what sort of pictures are you gonna get? Mm, wrong pictures. So the morning is about getting everyone into the right mindset, getting everyone buzzing, getting everyone feeling inspired and excited. And then there's a whole afternoon with camera in hand whilst in that mindset. And it's a practical demonstration as to what's going on. Now, along the way, I do do a few demos. This was one where we were talking about panoramics. It's just about a whole bunch of different compositions, but making sure they overlap and then all you do is you bring them into a program like Lightroom. I use Lightroom, there are many others, and you can then photo merge them together. Again, I went black and white and got this one. I didn't do a great job of that because I couldn't really see. I was also, instead of doing it in the viewfinder, where you can really concentrate, I was using the LCD with the sun shining on it, so it was pretty difficult. But nonetheless, look, it worked. Now let's have a little look at what else we were doing. So here is our young lad. Now look at the other shots <laughs> that were taken. You see, that wasn't a one-shot wonder. Look, missed the moment, the little ball's rolling down his head. He's got it back. It's not quite right. It's out of focus. It's f I've, I've misfocused and caught the audience instead of the ball. Now here is our shot. That's the color version. Let's have a better look at it and see what you think. Please, in the comments below, tell me, do you prefer the color version or the black and white one? More shots, same subject, you see, of missing the moment. Another one, which I kind of like. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's not in my little bag of favorites. I think it works because of the two women leaning against the post and because of this guy here on his phone. We've obviously got a street performer, and if you know the area, you might recognize that as the Millennium Bridge in London, but nah. these are just pictures of some of our participants who are on Cameras Don't Take Pictures. You see, even there, look, I shot three frames. I very often shoot in burst mode when photographing people in life. I don't hold big long bursts, generally speaking, but it just helps you capture the right moment. Again, more shots of this guy. They don't really work. They're pretty dull. They're a bit boring. That's kind of... Mm, I just don't think they're as good as the others. We then had... There was somebody blowing bubbles, and this happened really quickly. I just kind of watching the bubbles come past, and I just instinctively started to shoot. Exposure was wrong. This is the reason I said earlier, you must make sure your exposure is already set. Have your camera ready to rock and roll. Here's the guys playing with the bubbles now. I'm on the wrong side of the bubbles. The light is coming from this side over here. So therefore the place you want to be to photograph them is down here where I think that's Wendy's sister whose name I can't remember. I'm so sorry if you're watching and I expect you are. But she's shooting from exactly the right angle and I look forward to seeing which, what images she captured because this was only a couple of days ago. As you can see, there aren't that many that I got excited about. A man and his nuts. I kind of like that one. Mm, kind of like it. Mm, nah, didn't make my final selection. Now here are our friends on the bridge. There's a few of these. Now there's the first frame when I first noticed them. To be honest, I'm really doing a test shot, making sure the exposure is correct. Don't be afraid to take test shots. Just shoot a couple of frames and just look at it and go right that needs to be a bit brighter or a bit darker change the exposure shooting in manual in these situations in my opinion is much easier and much quicker why because the light in this place is not changing if it was a day where the light was changing it was thick cloud it was going in and out in and out up and down yeah maybe you have a good reason to want to shoot in a semi-auto mode or something 
But when the light is consistent and you're in, you're in location, just set it and forget it. Because if you change the composition and add more sky or less sky, more dark areas, more bright areas, the camera doesn't know that they're meant to be there and it will change the exposure. And then you will be chasing things all over the place in post-production, trying to make them consistent. You only need one exposure if the light isn't changing. Here's my test shot. Now, as you can see, she kind of glanced over her shoulder pretty much straight away and noticed me. So that's when I just said, you know, hey, you guys look gray, interact, blah, blah, blah. And they had just gone to take a selfie. I missed the moment, the selfie moment. And I just told her, you know, you guys look great. I just missed you doing that selfie because, you know, when people do selfies, it looks great. And asked them to do it again. And here they are. Now the pitch which I chose is this one again, which do you prefer? Oh, I don't know if I, I haven't, I didn't make a copy of it, so I haven't got the color version there, but here we go. Here's the little sequence of events. That's the shot I thought I wanted because that's what I saw them doing initially. But when they recreated it, it didn't quite work. There's an energy missing for me. Whereas that one has the energy because he's talking to her and ignoring me. Whereas here, they kind of, trying to recreate something they'd done. And here's the others, they're all right, misfocused, camera shake, I can't be camera shake, look at the shutter speed, 125th of a second at F10, why F10? I want a little bit of depth of field, I want a little bit of what's going on. But look, even at F10, the background isn't fully sharp. Why is that? It's because they're close to the camera. What is my focal length? 50 millimeters. You can see it up there. If people are inside the infinity point of your lens, you can get a blurry background. Even if you shoot at the smallest aperture, there's a good chance you will not get full depth of field. And that's what's going on here. That's why we've got a blurryish background at F10. The thing about it, F10, it's only a little bit beyond F8, isn't it? Started playing around with movement seeing if we could do some you know icm but it just didn't work couldn't get the shutter speed slow enough look we're on the 30th of a second didn't work loads of stuff that didn't work started playing around with zoom blur seeing if that would work yeah kind of but this shot doesn't work look cut the top of some pulls off it's it's just uh, what are we supposed to be looking at well obviously this girl's rather lovely shape but mm, it's just doesn't work as a picture. Now, as luck would have it, now the composition is spot on. We've got some pulls, we've got all that good stuff going on here. And this guy just happened to suddenly do something extroverted. Unfortunately, we look at him full screen, look at the point of focus, it's kind of on his arm and this guy's face, not on him. So I decided it wasn't one of mine, here's Bob. We've already seen that one, not much more to say. Now here is the selection of the lady, the artist. Again, tell me if you prefer these to be color or black and white. Now that's the one which I chose. That's the one which I really liked. Uh, another version of it, same angle, but look, I've got, the, I've got my toe in shot down here. Um, yeah, didn't work, did it? That one didn't work either. We've got passers-by, it's, it's just too messy. The one that works is that one. Um, yeah, somebody from the workshop. Now here is that shot I mentioned before, which I thought wasn't worth bothering to keep. I thought I'd missed the moment. In black and white, I think it really works. But in color, and I have got that, what do you think? Color or black and white? I much prefer the black and white, why? The color of her dress is clashing with the bridge in the background. Somehow that color is adding a degree of noise and distraction. Whereas the black and white, to me, she just stands out of the picture. It's that expression. It begins there. Then I notice the, the excitement on the guy next to her's face. In the color one, I don't even notice the guy next to her. Just a thought, maybe it's just me but I'm really showing you all the stuff that didn't work. There we go, some more stuff. Now I was playing around with test shots here with exposure, some of the guys that were on the photo walk. Um, you know, obviously I'll give that one to the guys, it's just a snapshot of them, but they're not great photos. These guys looked quite nice, but when I was shooting this, it was much too hurried as opposed to, taking a bit of time and being ready. I wasn't quite ready and I was scrabbling to catch something. Now, bear in mind, I'm needing a photo walk with a bunch of people who are paying me for the day. 
for the experience and for the training. Had I been there on my own, I might have stopped in that location for as long as it took. Now that might be 10 or 15 minutes. We were probably there for 10 or 15 minutes, or it might have been an hour or more waiting for the right person to come through. Now we did mess around with this. Um, so there we go, that's the location. That's what it looked like in color with that heavy shadow. Now there's exposure control going on here, bringing that exposure down on purpose to make the shadow really black. Now, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, infinity points and exposure and changing the exposure, arguing with the light meter, I can help you with all of that because until you can master your camera, effortlessly and easily so that you can jump up on a wall behind an artist and as you're doing it set the focus set the exposure line everything up and go click i'm sorry my friend you are at the start of your journey you are a beginner no matter how long you've been doing photography till you can do the camera light and composition with as much thought as you give to breathing I'm sorry, how can you possibly be creative when a load of your brain power is caught up in settings and where are the shadows and having to think too much about it? Have a look at my Masterclass in Photography online course. You can try a free sample. There is a link coming up in the right hand corner of your screen. Get yourself out of this pain. Learning everything from everybody just doesn't work. You need a structure. So here's some pictures. Here's one of the guys in the workshop. You know, we just, he, he said, oh, I'll walk through for you if you like. You know, we did a few. I was showing people the benefits of burning on burst when doing this, because you can capture the perfect moment, such as, I love that as a moment, because I like the way his face is lost in the shadow. He's kind of carved. I, I kind of like it, but nah. These were really demo shots to show people the benefits of burst. If you wanted to frame someone in that archway, Burst is the way to do it because you've got all these little moments as the person walks through. That, I don't know what was going on there. Again, somebody was walking through backwards and forwards. These are mostly students. I'm just going to go quickly. I've gone too far. These two, I noticed them on a step. I liked their body language and I like this picture, but it didn't make my top chosen ones. Here's another little thing. 55 millimeter lens. That's not cropped. I'm really close to them. Now, if you can own the space that you're in, it's amazing how invisible you can become and you need to have the camera ready, the exposure set, everything set up already. You can approximate the distance. Look at the aperture we're shooting at, F9, 500 ISO to allow F9 because it gives me a bit more depth of field. I can approximate the distance, focus on the ground or something within that distance and just literally go up to them and go click and walk off. Boom. <clears throat> I don't think they even noticed me. So there's a couple of frames of them and I got an exposure wrong here and there. Not great. The ladies coming down the street. This was a hard choice. I mean, look at this one. It's got lots of dynamism and energy. It's when I first shouted out to them, ladies, you look great. And then the next one, because I was burning on burst. But look, I only shot four frames. That's a tiny tap, you know, it's that's it. You don't need to shoot millions like I did when we were looking at the whole burst mode thing under the arch. That one, it just doesn't work, does it? It's somehow something changed and then suddenly, boom, they came back into step. And that is the one that I loved. So our Instagrammers, look, there's quite a lot of shots I took of these two, trying to find a moment, trying to figure it out. Um, mostly test shots. Look at the lamp post, see how it's cropped off. These are all the things that you don't get to see. Right, now we've got the composition, we know what we're doing, we've got the exposure, we've got everything lovely. Um, black and white will color. And then there's a couple of other shots. And then, to be honest, I just got bored. Then we went up onto London Bridge, uh, sorry, Tower Bridge, and we were again looking at panos. Um, and someone brought up the very valid point that Let's go a bit further. At this end, the bridge, very, very bright, very, very burnt out. Yes, it's very bright, it is burnt out, but it was burnt out to our eyes. You pull detail back in, too much detail back into those burnt out areas, it just looks like someone's photoshopped it and it's been fiddled about with. Because honestly, it was super bright. We did a little exposure bracketing panel. So look, one composition, three different exposures. 
next composition, three different exposures, next composition, three different exposures. So there is a shed load of images here, which we then all brought together, and it is that one back there, and HDR'd them. So that's pretty accurate. The sky was really, really bright because I was shooting JPEG. These are JPEGs that have been mapped together because I had the camera on the wrong settings. There's not much I could do with the tonality. I'd like to lift the shadows a bit. It looks a bit muddy, but never mind. It's the technique. Same composition, three different exposures. Use burst mode. Bracket mode and burst mode combined. That's what we were looking at. Again, more shots. Look, again, this is one look I shortlisted it. You can see five stars and a green, but it didn't actually make the final cut because I've got a better version of this picture from Cameras Don't Take Pictures a year or two ago. But look, slightly different images. This one is a bracket. Um, slightly different angles. See, that's a different angle. Mm, didn't really like it. Reflections of the shard and some of the buildings. That one I kind of liked. And you know, it's a good picture, but hey. These are the stalwarts who stayed to the very end. That was a long walk and it was a long day. And if you were on that photo walk, I apologize right now. I should have done it a group shot at the start. Apologies, it slipped my mind. By the time we got to here about 6 p.m., many of you guys had had to leave. More experimentation, playing around, seeing if I could get a panoramic through this as a view of the shard. Look, the light's gone, it's just dull. I shot it because the sky looked nice, but it's just not worth having. You see, it just goes to show, even though I've been photographing for years, for some amazing clients all over the world and running workshops, and I've got some pretty cool awards and things. Even I still go, oh, that sky looks nice and can't resist the click. It happens to us all. But if you can restrain yourselves a bit, it's a good idea. The kids who were doing the dancing, absolutely magical. You see, I'm torn here again a little bit. I love the black and white. But what do you think? Color or black and white, please pop it into the comments. And here are the other shots taken of these guys. There's only a few, didn't take loads. There's a little magical moment here. Look at that. There's just a happy something going on. But the key takeaway for this is notice how many shots I took to get 10. Now this is street photography. This is very much live documentary as it's happening. As it's happening. If you're doing something more like still life, then you are far more in control of your environment, of your light, of all that sort of stuff. If you're doing portraiture, you're more in control. You don't necessarily need to shoot millions. Burst is pretty good with a portrait because if there are fleeting expressions and you're interacting to create them, it's a good way to capture them. But what I really wanted to do was just to show you all the shots that didn't make the cut, how many I took, 200, out of an afternoon's photo walk and the ones I've chosen, and I am being ruthless, there are some good ones in there, but I don't really want to keep them. Um, I've just selected 10. If you'd like to come on a photo walk with me on a workshop, because we've got some great workshops in Lanzarote, wonderful workshop, Morocco. And in Morocco, we can really do a bit of good because there was a recent earthquake and by being there, we are supporting the people in the villages because that's where we spend time and we like to spend money with them. Um, Iceland and others, Zurich's coming up and more Ireland. Come on a workshop because you will get a full immersive experience of shooting on location and being coached at the same time. The little square that is popping out next to me right now will take you to a page where you can sign up to my newsletter. Please do that because then we can stay in touch and I can make sure you are always up to date on everything that's going on. Thank you for watching. Please remember to do the like thing. I wish you well and look forward to next time.